In the history of the film, no genre has lasted the test of time, as well as the horror genre, largely due to its iconic villains. Evil made acts and killers who murder without mercy, but none of them are the same. From one to the next, these killers vary in their levels of evil. Horror content creator Gorflo has studied the horror genre for over 50 years and now inspired by the works of Dr. Michael Stone from Columbia University. He is ready to place each of them in their proper place of evil. From Norman Bates to Pamela Voorhees and from Fagin Zito to Michael Myers, where will Gore rake them? Gore starts with a strange case of Angelo Baker. Dad, I've been at a sleepaway camp for almost three weeks, and I'm getting very scared. Angela from the original 1983 sleepaway camp film is a very interesting case. Along with being a tragic situation, Angela suffered a tremendous amount of mental and emotional abuse, not to mention the confusion it must have felt. I can only imagine the difficulty they had to have faced. Just the secrets alone had to have been wearing on them, especially as they began to grow into adolescence. The fact that Angela was actually a male child named Peter, but forced by his aunt to grow up not only as a female, but to take the identity of his dead sister. After he had experienced his sister's and father's deaths after a horrible accident, he had to keep that a secret from the age of six all the way to the age of 14. That mental trauma, along with the frontal lobe damage Peter suffered in a life-altering accident, can't be ignored as a mitigating factor. His quiet and antisocial behavior up to that point was assuredly due to the secret life. Nature has a very distinct and different way of changing boys and girls during adolescence. Due to these factors, I would usually put the Angela Baker case into my number four category for psychologically and mentally abused personality disorder range. However, despite definitely being insane, the brutal, callous murders of the young children, the four who were sleeping in their sleeping bags in, in Act 3, hadn't done anything to him. The gruesome decapitation of Paul at the end also had a factor, and was much more cruel and premeditated. Once Peter dropped his mask of sanity, he seemed to almost enjoy, and he indulged in the murders and couldn't stop. He lashed out and lashed back in the first way. So it's that escalation that I'll put him at a number 11. My category for slasher slash serial multiple premeditated murders. Evil takes on many forms and has many paths. George Tatum's voyage begins with a misunderstanding turned tragic. Emma Voorhees takes her revenge to a whole new and horrifying level. Leatherface was raised to not only murder his family, but to then cannibalize his victims with his family. The John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's original vision for Michael Myers in 1978's Halloween had no rhyme and no reason for his terror, or calls this one the shape of a man. I met this six year old child with this blind emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Michael revels in fear. The pleasure for him is the watching and stalking of his victims. He is preferred to as a shape because he is the shape of a man of what's normal. He's an emotionless, faceless monster. His mask is his face. Michael Myers isn't the most cut and dry of all murder cases. He's called pure evil.
because he kills for no reason. When I agree to a point, I have to disagree to a point also. It was said that Michael mentioned hearing voices prior to killing his sister. Well, that's impossible to explore, I think the truth starts with his sister Judith. Deep in Michael's mind, I believe Michael wants to keep that night and that feeling he had when he killed his sister. He murdered Judith for her actions and non-actions. She was engaging in activities with her boyfriend one too many times instead of watching him as she was supposed to be. Perhaps jealousy, perhaps out of revenge, perhaps just to punish her. Maybe Michael considered Judith his. Fifteen years later, he came back to that same place to relive that feeling. Three teenagers are murdered for doing the same things Judith was doing. Similar actions, similar ages, similar looking. To kill teenage girls over and over again, to immerse himself in the one feeling that he understands. The watching, and the stalking, and then the power of cold, premeditated, brutal murder. Michael Myers is many things. A brutal killer, a slasher, as we call him. But most definitely evil. Where I can't put Michael at the top of my list, but it's being the most evil, because he doesn't commit rapes, and he doesn't kill children, but I can put him one level below that, at number 11. The same place I put Angela. Number 11. It's for Slasher. Serial premeditated multiple murders. There are many kinds of evil. Slashers. There's child murderers. Revenge killers. Murders for greed. For jealousy, control. Next week, Gore will explore three different little killers. George Tatum, from Nightmare in a Danny's Brain. Dean Foley, from Pieces. And one of Cinema's most iconic and most 